Bob and Carol, let's just talk about some basic things today that I want to cover. And the, the one thing that we talked about in the past here is I want to go over the three bucket strategy. And what that means is let's, let's take your money and whatever kind of investments you have, whatever type of programs you want, you really could divide your money into three categories or what we'll call buckets. The first is what we would call rainy day bucket. And this is years ago, I used to call it a put and take. You put it in a day, what do you do down the road? You take it out, okay? This is gonna be money that is gonna be safe money. This is gonna be money that is liquid money and this is going to be money that is low interest rates, okay? Whatever interest rates are doing, this is gonna be the lowest on the scale. Typically, this is gonna be checking, savings, Christmas club, those types of accounts. You're really not gonna make a lot of money in here. This is just a modified version of what they used 150 years ago, the mason jar. Meet Mark Kemp, President and CEO of Kemp & Associates, a full-service investment advisory firm located in Harleysville, Pennsylvania, specializing in retirement planning services. I had never heard of Mark Kemp or his business until the day I received a call from him. The good folks over at Nationwide Financial, you know, Nationwide is on your side, yeah, those guys. Well, apparently they had commissioned a documentary that profiled Mark and his business for a day in the life of a financial planner. Mark had seen my work online and thought that I would be the right fit. The plan was to spend a few days at his business in Harleysville, Pennsylvania, and then fly to Columbus, Ohio, where Mark had been invited to share his philosophy on financial planning with over 150 agents at the Nationwide Financial Home Office. Now, as a documentary filmmaker, I'm rather skeptical. Based on the media's criticism of the financial industry's lack of proper regulation and oversight, it appears to be an industry infamous not only for undisclosed fees, but where commissions always seem to take precedent over the client's best interest. So I wondered, what would make Mark Kemp any different? I was about to spend three days with him to find out. Our first stop was Mark's business, Kemp & Associates. There I had arranged to sit down and chat with several of Mark's key employees to get an understanding of the company culture. It was time to start turning over a few stones. I went to school to be a Baptist minister. Could I look anymore? Baptist, oh my goodness, okay. Um, Baptist minister or a math teacher. I should have been an FBI agent. So you can't be more paranoid than me. You can take it as a challenge, but I'm an open book and, and I, I'm always thinking, it's perfect for Philadelphia, right? Okay, the land of brotherly love. What's, what's the catch? What's the hustle? Are you trying to rip me off? We build our entire business on word of mouth. And the only way that succeeds is if you consistently do right by the client. Uh, if, if you rely on that client to be your advertising for the next client, then if you don't have a track record that demonstrates that you are always gonna follow through with what you say you're gonna do, and you're always doing right by the client, that model falls apart. And uh, you know, not trying to say that other businesses don't do that or can't do that, but just here, that's really been the driving force behind our, our growth over the years. Yeah, you know, we focus a lot on our future clients. We were, you know, uh, people who call us wanting our help with financial planning. So um, most oftentimes that's initiated by them calling us. So I'm the one who answers the phone, so I'm that person who takes that phone call. And I kind of explain a little bit about what we do, set their expectations for their first meeting, uh, explain a little bit about what happens and what Mark will go over, and then I'm the one who they meet when they first come in. So it's nice for them to be able to put an immediate face with the name, and you know, they say, oh, Melissa, okay, you know, and they feel like, you know, in our conversations, they've already gotten, gotten to know me a little bit, and then, you know, they kind of feel at ease when they come into the office. So what would happen if a client comes in and say they meet with Mark and Todd, they go over the process and they you know, they leave here thinking, okay, yeah, this is the right thing for me. But then lots of times they'll have 
follow-up questions. They'll go home and be like, wait a minute, did I really understand what this product does for me, how the investment's going to work? So they'll call into the office and I'll walk them through that. I'll explain the product to them and how it works, how it benefits them, what their options are for income, and just to make sure they're completely comfortable. We always tell people you don't want to make a move unless you're 100% comfortable. If you're not sure, then just don't don't do it. But that's why we're here to make sure they have a full understanding of the investments they're going into. Let's go. Let's let's go through what we're going to be doing today. Is we're going to be doing the uh, customer service process. This is something we've done very well, we've done for years, but what we're gonna be doing today is brainstorming on actually articulating all this. So as we're going through, I need your input, I need you to say what you're thinking, but normally what happens, okay, someone calls, a future client calls, right? Okay, then what happens? I was in the mortgage business for 30 years. When the mortgage business started to go under, um, they closed down where I worked and then it all came together as far as coming to work for Kemp and Associates and after working here for almost four years I really wish I would have worked for Mark much sooner. You're just a number with a big company. I feel working here we're a family and I think that all starts with Mark. When I started here there were only about goodness, seven of us that worked in the office and we've grown in the past six and a half years to where we're at right now. Um, I like it a lot better working in a smaller office. You feel much more like a family. Where you're in a bigger company, there's set procedures and there's a certain chain of command that you need to go through and your ideas aren't always heard. Um, but Mark is very open to hearing everybody's ideas and wants their input. He values that. So it really is nice to have that. You know, Mark says, yeah, we have this like, you know, team camp and that's what it is. We all have a hand in it and we all like shoot for the common goal. And, um, but I, I feel very, I feel very fortunate. I feel like I'm, you know, stumbled into the greatest thing that I have going on right now. It's, it's a valuable place to be. This is a family and I have no plans on going anywhere else. I didn't have it perfectly mapped out, but I started saying, what if, what if I could build an office where I have a, gr I do a great job and we have people that come and see us that want to see us nine to five, Monday through Friday, and people would just tell me, oh, it's never gonna happen. And so I, I started laying out goals and saying, okay, if I could help people, the, the money will come, the, 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 the compensation will come. If I could help people, what does that look like? And uh, I wish I could say that I'd always had the attitude of lining up with my Christian beliefs of impacting people's lives long term, it wasn't that as much as, hey, how can I just make this work? So it's kind of like the first 10 years was kind of figuring out what I want to do, uh, kind of getting experience of financial planning, and, and quite frankly, building a reputation. What are people looking for? You know what people are looking for? I'm going to get on a tangent. Thanks for queuing me up. We're, here's what people are looking for. Lou, Lou Holtz, um, coach for many years, number one, can I trust you? That's the biggest thing. Financial planners ask me all the time, why are you successful? Well, it's not because of good looks, okay? I can assure you now, all right? It's because I try and do what I say I'm gonna do, all right? Um, Proverbs 22.1 says a good name is, is more desirable than great riches. Number two, do you care about me? Do you care about me? How many times have we gone to the doctor and maybe he's the best doctor in the field, but he's in a hurry. When my first child was being born, the doctor was going, oh, and I go, is this another day at the factory for you? And he goes, yeah. I go, well, guess what? This is my first child. I need you to step it up and focus because it's my first child. It might have been your 500th. So do you care about me? Can I trust you? Last thing, are you committed to excellence? My business is do the right thing. Think of that as a foundation. And then I better be great at my product knowledge and I better be great at my people knowledge. It's 90% people knowledge, but I better be real strong at that 10%. I finally worked my way over to Callie Sanders. I saved her for last, well, because she was the first, the first person Mark ever hired. Mark had just moved into an office. He was actually practicing out of his basement. So um, a neighbor was a client, 
and I was, my daughter had just started first grade and I was not a stay at home mom. So I was looking for something to do. And so they said, oh, you should call Mark. Didn't know him. So I came in and through a process of elimination, I came to work. So the first day that I came to work for Mark, I was gonna work from 10 in the morning until one in the afternoon. I worked one day, three hours. The rest is pretty much history. I had just a horrible, small, dinky office. It was probably um, about a third of this size of this room in here, very small, uh, maybe a 10 by 10 uh, room. It smelled, and uh, I started asking all my clients, I said, I need to hire an assistant. And one of my clients said, I've got the perfect person for you, and it was Callie. And uh, from that office, we, we, we rolled out Kemp and Associates. He was um, a real go-getter. He saw, he only met clients um, at their homes because we, we had a little tiny office space. So um, he pretty much lived like a vampire. He would see people at night. So, um, and he, I mean, he worked relentlessly. It seemed like the first five years, uh, all winter long, my feet were cold because I was going to people's homes, freezing, you know, being discouraged, dreary. It, it was, it was, it was a, it was the the best time, the worst times. It was a bone crusher, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Now, it takes a while to build that. You're going to starve, and most guys are either not willing to pay that price, um, or not willing to pay that price. After a full day at Kemp and Associates, our next stop was the Kemp household, about a 10 minute drive from the office. When we arrived, I was introduced to Mark's wife, Shelley, who he started dating while still in college. I then met their very well behaved kids, Ty, Zach, and Caroline, the youngest of the three. Since I was gonna be busy interviewing Mark and Shelley, they invited their family friend, Deb Liata, over to make a home-cooked meal for us. A nice touch. After what appeared to be a daily pre-dinner family discussion, it was time to sit down and eat. After dinner, I sat down with Mark's wife, Shelley, to turn over a few more stones. Well, how I first met Mark is I was in college with him, and he was a very gregarious and outgoing person. And as you can probably tell, I'm a very quiet person and very reserved, and I needed to get things spiced up a little bit, and Mark definitely did that for me, so yeah. I go off to college, and um, it was during, it was around this time that I, a drastic change in my life, I became a born-again Christian huge, like the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. And so I, I went for a year at Black Hill State College in uh, South Dakota by Mount Rushmore, enjoyed it, but I really felt the burden to go to uh, a Baptist college, a Bible college actually, just turned out to be a Baptist college. And I went there and I was still thinking of being a teacher and then toying with the idea of being a minister. And uh, that's where I met Shelley. We dated all the way through college. We got married the day after college graduation. I wouldn't recommend that because I had my finals that week and it was crazy and my mother planned my wedding and I just showed up for it, so. Um. I came to a crossroads as I was looking at graduating from school, getting married, having no money. Uh, I was going to Bible college in Minnesota and uh, I couldn't get a job anywhere unless I worked in a factory. It came down to Prudential said, you can be a financial planner. And uh, because of my math background, I said, wow, that sounds cool. So they had me go door to door in January of 89 in Minnesota in, you know, 10 below, asking people they buy life insurance. They did that to get rid of me because most people would quit. I was just too stupid to know any better. He was literally sometimes going through the phone book and looking up all the Kemp's in the phone book and calling them, you know, you want to buy life insurance. At the same time, there was a guy out here that was recruiting for another company. Uh, we had about $1,400 saved up from wedding gifts. We moved out here, and I was working for about two months. I go, when am I gonna get a check? He goes, I really wasn't honest with you, it's a draw. I mean, I think we were just dumb, and we just thought, this is just the way it has, this is just the way you start out. 
you don't question it. I didn't, you know, I didn't question it too much. Um, I think we're just stupid, you know? <laughs> it took uh, about five years to just, just barely squeak out a living and build traction. The interesting part was I was winning all kinds of Rookie of the Year award. We might call it Too Stupid to Quit award, but I was winning, uh, I was winning a lot of awards, um, which eagle-wise wasn't, it, it was important, but it was more an affirmation of my work ethic. If you'll come in and get results, you're gonna sow and reap business success, and if you ignore your family or ignore your spouse, you're gonna reap that as well. Well, um, right now what we're doing is we're leaving the uh, northwest suburb of Philadelphia. We're going to Philadelphia International, and uh, we're flying to beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Uh, in the last couple of years, there's been a retirement plan program that Nationwide Insurance has had, and uh, they've got a product that uh, we used quite a bit last year for clients when it was appropriate. In fact, uh, we were the number one independent financial planning group in the nation with them, and so they were gracious enough to uh, invite both uh, you and I to beautiful Columbus, Ohio, and uh, have me speak for a day and talk about our secrets, if you will, uh, our processes and our, our views. Also, they, they, wanted, they wanted to have a documentary done on us, the day in the life of a financial planner, so you and I got to hang out. My paternal grandmother had an incredible work ethic. And whether it was by design or by accident, she indoctrinated me with stories of having to struggle. Okay, so my father, uh, when he was about 16, my grandfather was tragically killed. And it really, I think it kind of threw him off for a while. I think he was kind of searching and trying to figure out what he wanted. I think he went on, you know, did some stupid things. And then he settled down when he was around uh, 19 and he married his high school sweetheart, who was my mom. So my mom had to be married b about 18. And uh, by the time she was about 21, she had three of us. And my father was working a regular job and he was working a side job surveying. And on Thanksgiving weekend, they were surveying a dam and um, they were taking a helicopter back and he was tragically killed. So it was a real heartbreaker and my mom was widowed at a very young age and didn't have a lot of, um, I don't know if I would say life skills, but just didn't have a great support network, really struggled, it was tough. And there was actually some form of settlement as a result of my father's death and it was mismanaged um, by trust officers, by stockbrokers, by whomever. Um, so growing up, it was, wasn't horrible, but I remember the burden being on my mom I remember having a single mom having to work all the time. I do remember money always being tight. And it was it was just, she, she really had to grind it out. Every, every financial institution has usually some form of liaison that they use to, um, to contact and, and to propose their product, and, and Nationwide is no different. And uh, the gentleman that was assigned to our area, is, uh, his name's Rich Farrell, really nice guy. Uh, what we liked about Rich was the fact that uh, from day one, we took him through what we show clients, uh, our, our, our logical financial process, and... Um, he immediately latched onto that and started saying, these are the areas where we think our products could help you and be beneficial. And frankly, here's the areas where we're not the right fit. It's, it's not one size fits all and everything is uh, you know, offered by one institution only. And so very impressed by that and as well as wanting to, uh, wanting to know more about how they could best service our, our existing clients with their products. It was uh, about a year, year and a half ago now, uh, went up to Mark's office. We sat down, Mark made a point of uh, 
going through his client presentation and how he does business. So I understood my position, how I could best benefit him. Uh, and then I had the opportunity to bring Tim Long, our national sales manager, up to see Mark, and we spent about an hour, hour and a half together. Uh, what came out of that meeting were some great things where we coordinated with Mark some, some uh, initiatives, some business initiatives that he could take advantage of within Nationwide to bring him out to Columbus and give him uh, not only a tour of the facilities, but give him the ability to speak with some of our top management, some of our decision makers at Nationwide to be able to, to get a sense of what, not only what we're about, but perhaps how Mark could help Nationwide even improve uh, the financial advisor experience. A little bit of a background. We try and do full financial planning, holistic financial planning. It sounds corny in today's environment. That's what we do when people walk in, is I'm looking at, at the end of the day, how can I help these people? Where Nationwide comes in is Nationwide currently offers some great products. But you have some wonderful products out there today. You don't see across the board. This is a great time to be in the business. This is a great time to work for a company like Nationwide and have those kind of products. I thoroughly enjoy speaking because what the way I'm wired is it, it really is a type of almost teaching or educating and uh, very enthusiastic when I teach. It just, it's, it's my passion. My rule of thumb is if you ask me to do something as long as it's not illegal, unethical, or impossible, okay, I can't make you rich, that's the lottery, all right? But if you got a problem and I can legitimately solve it, I'm gonna solve it, even to the detriment of profitability. That's what I do. I, I get paid to solve problems in a very simplistic manner and help them look at inefficiencies in their overall, not just their retirement plan, in their overall financial plan, okay? Because why? You can't buy great PR, but if you take care of people, again, do it, can I trust you? Do you care about me? Committed to excellence. If I convey that in great customer service, the referrals will come. If you're gonna work in the customer service business, then, then why don't you practice going the extra mile? We had an Aunt Myrtle growing up, and I always say to people, if it was your Aunt Myrtle, your favorite relative, what would you do? So it's not only my standard for living, my creed is to do the right thing, but one of the spin-offs that most people don't get is it's, it's good business.